What is up guys, it's Ace and welcome back to another video. Today is a great day because we're going over one of my favorite plugins and that is Magic Bullet Looks. Magic Bullet Looks is probably one of those powerful like color grading, color correction plugins you can possibly get out there. It's made by Red Giant and it's really, really, really in depth and you can do a whole lot with it. So I'm gonna do something a little special for you guys today. I'm gonna give you guys a whole preset pack so you guys can have um, kind of like a base level of different looks that you can throw on your videos and kind of adjust them for different scenes. So um, I'll also go over one of them and how I make it. I'll go step by step on every single part so you'll have that for free. And if you want to um, download the rest of them, uh, you can find them on my Selfie page and I'll link it down below. So first thing I'm gonna do for you guys is go through how to make one of these and then I'll after the end, I'll go through every single one. So if you want to skip ahead and just see what all the different looks look like, I'll put a timestamp down below so you can see what they look like. But for everyone else that wants to learn and um, you learn how to fish and not be given to fish, then uh, go ahead and continue the video where it's at. But all right, let's hop right into it. So this is the look that we're going to be going into. And I'm going to be breaking down. I called it the red dade look, and you'll see why here in a little bit. Well, obviously you can see that it's red, but the dade part is a lookup table effect in magic bullet looks so um so it's pretty simple and straightforward but um as you can tell every single one of these looks are going to affect different scenes differently that's why i broke it up into different animes and different light balance color balances i mean so you guys can see how it affects different things i try to make it as balanced as possible but it's never going to be perfect so you gotta depending on what you're doing you're gonna have to adjust it so i'm gonna go ahead and break it down and um you guys can do with it what you will all right so first things first is um i'm gonna go ahead and reset my magic bullet looks so all the looks are on right now i'm going to reset it so everything is off so there we go so this is the raw footage here okay let's go and hop in the editor by clicking the edit button right here and i always work left to right when i work with magic bullet looks because i mean that's just my personal preference i mean you can do it in order any order that you want but it makes more sense to for me to work with the source footage and then go to subject, mad lens, etc. So going that way always works best for me. And I always keep these scopes open. If you don't have this open, press S or you can just click this little arrow right here. And I I keep these in mind because this helps you know what levels of each color um, you're getting. So you don't want these to be looking too crazy. Like you don't want all your greens to be slammed up, like collected all right here or too low or something like that. So that'll just give you a reference on what you're doing, make sure you're doing things correctly. So first things first is to click this, my footage uh, RS, sRGB source button right here, and you get these um, source settings. So this is like the most baseline port part of the footage, if you can think of it that way. So we've got the exposure, contrast, saturation, white, and black. For this look, first thing I'm gonna do is increase the contrast up to four, and the blacks up to five. So that does that. So next, let's head over to the subject tab right here. And I'm going to press T to bring up the tools right here. You press T and that opens and closes the tools window there. And I'm going to go ahead and add the colorista effect. I'm gonna press T to close that so I can edit it. And um, so here's where it's gonna get really cool. Um, so this allows you to control each individual color and how much of it actually exists in um, I guess it's the saturation. You think of it like that. It's, I mean, that's what it says. HSL stands for hue, saturation, lightness. So you can affect, you can affect all of that just by moving these dots around. So if I take this blue, for this look, I'm going to take this blue, I'm going to lower it down to there. Every single one of these except for the red, up, orange, up here. Same thing with the pink, right about there. As you can see over here, um, the red is kind of reaching over the 1.0 threshold, which is, mm, you usually want to stay away from that, but for this, um, it was kind of necessary, and you'll see why. Um, so I've got that, and I'm going to do a little bit of curves like that, just very, very subtle curves. And then after I do this many changes, I like I said, I look up here, and then I'm also going to press the check mark to see what these other s scenes look like. So I'm going to press that and see what we've got so far, see how we're going, okay. So right now we've got that. And you could be, you could stop there and just say you're done, or you can add these other things to kind of make the colors pop a little bit more. So let's go ahead and hop back into the editor and uh, make some more changes. And I'm going to stop on this frame so I can see what it looks like in here. Okay. So, so next tool we're going to add is the lookup table. 
the lookup table is um, it has a group of different settings that kind of adjust all the colors different ways. So like these different presets, I guess you can call them, will change all the colors a certain way. So I'm going to put on the date and the date will give you that right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and press the check mark again and take a look at what just changed. All right. So now we've got that. All right, so let's hop back in our editor and make the last couple changes for this look. Um, last thing I would do for this one is add a vignette and an edge softness. So um, these two things are, um, I mean, it's what it looks like. So it affects the lens itself. So a vignette will kind of darken the outer edges of the lens. Uh, the edge softness will basically create a blur on the edges of the, of the lens. So um, let's go ahead and do the vignette first since that's done pretty quickly. You can just turn anamorphic on that makes it this uh, anamorphic shape. And then I'm gonna increase the vignette number and the vignette amount up to usually around 70%, should be fine. And then edge softness, I always turn the quality up to 10. Um, I like higher quality things, so why not? And then blur size, I'm gonna put that on seven. The radius up as high as it goes, 2.0, and the spread down to, let's do about 0.6. That'll be fine. Okay, and then the last thing I do is I add, I like to add a, I mean, some people like it, some people don't like it, but I always, I always like to put it on. It's um, what's called a fade, and I usually use um, this tool called Mojo in the post section over here. So click post and press T, and this will come up, and then um, add Mojo. So Mojo, um, some of you guys might want to keep that on, I mean, if you like that, but um, for this look, I had it turned off, and blue squeeze off, skin squeeze off, and I turn the fade up to 100%, and that is it. And that is the red day look in the preset pack. So if you're okay with that, you can just copy those settings and you're good to go. <laughs> or if you wanna make changes to it, you know, based on the things that you're working on, you can do that. But yeah, I guess we'll go and hop in and I'll show you what every single one of these looks look like. And I'll, I'll also cut the screen in half. Well, not the screen, but the adjustment layer in half so you can see kind of a before and after. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you what each one of these look like. All right, so let me go ahead and create a mask. I'm gonna press Q and cut this in half. Oh, I already did a mask. <laughs> I forgot I did that already. All right, so let's, um, let's turn this mask on. Add, there we go. Put that to fit. Okay, so now let's go through the entire list. All right, so next we've got is this uh, two strip look and we're going to put that on. There you go. And I'm going to turn the mask settings on and off so we can um, see the entire clips with it with it on as well. There's another, it's sort of like um, changing everything to red scion colors. That's a pretty cool shot right there. <laughs> um, yeah, let me turn this mask off real quick. There you go, so that's what it looks like. Not too bad. Um, next we've got the black and white look, which is pretty self-explanatory. Let me do a half and half, there you go. All right, next we've got the chroma look, which I think that's the one I use for my thumbnail, so you guys have probably already seen that. Oh, I actually need to put both of them on. There we go. So this is chroma look. Let me turn this off. Really, really bright and vibrant. And um, next we've got the duotone look. I think I was going for kind of like a sunset sort of look, kind of. Next, we've got the evening look. Let's put that on. It looks really, really balanced in, in this shot here. This whole anime, this whole anime was animated so well. So I mean, pretty much everything looks good. It's a little before and after. There you go. Okay, and next we've got the flare look. And this one, this one's really, really hard to balance. Oops. Got two of them on. Um, this one was really hard to balance because the flares only work well in certain scenes. Like it's so, it's really strong on this one. 
really strong, but something like here, I think it works really well. And same thing here, it's not bad. But yeah, like I said, depending on the scene you're working on, you're gonna have to adjust these, some of these settings if you wanna use them correctly. <laughs> but all right, so next is the Fujifilm. Fujifilm, I usually love working with Fujifilm. It just looks so like, I don't know, vintage, I guess is the word. I really like it. And I, I will note that um, with film, um, film effects that are in um, the looks, there was they usually I always have the grain setting turned on and I usually turn that off because uh, it's kind of a long explanation but basically most platforms that you upload to will not show grain correctly so I just turn that off but if it were up to me like a project project I was working on I would have grain on because grain makes it look really professional and um, yeah oh some people call it noise but yeah um, let me turn I don't know if I showed you with it full there you go Okay, um, next let's do the, oh, it's greenhouse look, that's what it's called, greenhouse. So this one's, this one's decent, I like, I like how it looks on this scene. Okay, and then next we've got the hyper bright, which is exactly what it sounds like. Go ahead and put on hyper bright very very bright I don't think it works well at all on this scene <laughs> look at that yeah but this is this is the type of shot this is the type of look I would put on like a flashback type of thing or like you know certain specific moments I wouldn't put this over an entire video ever look how bright that is I mean it has its use case but that's completely up to you all right so next we've got the ice look oh, I really like this one this one was fun to make um, it makes turns everything bas basically like blue and white, and that's why I called it ice. Everything looks really cool and and calm down and frosty. It almost looks like it's winter time. <laughs> okay. Um, next we have the Mojo look, and Mojo is probably one of my favorite things in um, Magic Bullet looks. And Mojo actually has its own um, standalone effect within Magic Bullet looks as well. Next, we've got the night look. I'll go ahead and put that on and turn this off for now. There's that. Before and after. The goal is to make it look like it's obviously nighttime, but um, I would usually add other things. But this, these presets are specifically only Magic Bullet looks, so. Um, if you want to add other things after that, that is completely up to you. Um, next, we've got Polaris look. Polaris is kind of um, similar to night look, but more bright. Because Polaris, if you don't know, is the uh, North Star. So, a lot of blues and deep blacks. Alright, so next we've got the uh, Pop. So, Pop is... Pretty pretty simple. Um, you know, before and after. And next we've got the Prolochrome look, and um, Prolochrome. This one's a little different because you can see it's distorting the um, the film because I added some lens distortion in there, and that was obviously intentional. Almost like a old Polaroid, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, and then next we've got the purple sky look. All right, and then next, we've already done Red Dade, so I'm gonna skip that, and let's go on to the Tranquil look. It's 
So there's that one. And um, next we've got Vibrant. There we go. All right, and lastly, we've got the vintage look. Which this one is exactly what it sounds like. It's meant to make it look like it has it's made of vintage old film and obviously there's no film damage on it because like I said this this pack is specifically for magic bullet looks and um, anything outside of that is something you have to add yourself so film scratches and flight flickers and all that stuff is something you're going to do yourself but I guess you guys started with this and um, yeah hopefully it's able to help you guys out um, if you want if you're interested just check out the link below and you can download it on my Selfie page or on patreon and I want to give a shout out to all my Patreon supporters that you guys are huge, huge, huge help. If you guys enjoyed the video, like and subscribe if you really enjoyed. And don't forget that I put directions um, in the description of the post on how to get these effects inside of your After Effects because um, some people don't know how to do that. So check out the directions if you need some help on that. And go ahead and leave me some suggestions below if you guys have any video ideas or tutorial ideas you want me to, to go over. And I'll take a look and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.